And welcome back to the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center here on the campus of Bramley State University where the men's basketball team getting ready to hit the floor as they will take on Jackson State University. Cletus and Mope joining us here at courtside. And Cletus, you know, we saw a great ball game uh, just uh, moments ago in overtime. Bramley beat Jackson. Now we get ready to see this men's basketball team who is in first place in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Of course, especially as a team at Grandma State University who was uh, preseason judged to be a seventh place contender in the SWAC, uh, being able to win 10 straight and being able to compete is supposed to say a lot if we could continue this streak. I think, if I'm not mistaken, we have one of the longest uh, basketball collegiate streaks in history at 10, at 10 uh, wins. Yeah, and you know, when you look at it as a program, you got to go back to 2005 season, 11 games, and then you go back into the mid-80s, right around there, I believe they won 11 games, right around 85, 84. But other than that, 61, 81, 11 conference wins, especially 11 in a row, that happened. Of course, and especially with Dante Jackson, the coach, a young team, uh, a lot of trials and tribulations that this team had to face going into this game and going into the season and being able to beat uh, 10 straight it says a lot about the coaching staff and uh, the new construction of this program by uh, for, uh, by 84 by. Yeah, and I think that you really brought the point. Program with Dante Jackson and what he's been able to do. And getting this team galvanized. Of course, he had a couple of pieces here when he got here that decided to stay here. But then, of course, after that, he had some guys that did decide to leave. But, you know, all of Deontay Jones is not playing. You still got Ivy Smith here. You had a couple of transfers that were already here. But then you added some of those other pieces that came to, the, to, to, came to fruition, and it's really helped. And uh, we also have to be mindful that we have uh, Anthony Gaston that's not suited up today as well. Um, Gaston is another one of those experienced players, uh, knows how to control the pace of the game. Sometimes it might not show up on the scoreboard what he brings to this team, uh, but he is a huge factor for this Grammy State uh, Tigers team. Well, they really do need Anthony Gaston because he does provide some great minutes, and uh, you hope that he's not out for very long because uh, he's a guy that can really, really help you out. All right, just about ready for action here between these two teams. Taking a look at the starting lineups, first of all, for the Jackson State University Tigers. They will start Julian Doherty, of course, the 6'3 guard. They will also start Paris Collins, who has had some injuries this year. Then you've got uh, Jer Jeremiah Jefferson. He'll uh, start this, uh, this game. Trayshawn Bolden, who is a big body on the inside. They're going to have to control that. And then Darius Austin will also start for Jackson State University. And then, of course, uh, for the uh, Grambling State University Tigers on the floor, you got Ivy Smith Jr., Drake Wilkes, who's been out with some injuries this year. JP will start. Devontae Jackson, who's been big for the Grambling Tigers as well, also will start this ball game. Ivy Smith up for the shot, no good, and there's going to be a foul on the floor. Jackson. To start the game, Jackson went start off with a 2-3, then went into a man within like the last 10 seconds of the shot clock. This is an interesting way to play defense this early in the game. Going from a 2-3 to a man, back into a 2-3. Takes a lot of discipline. As you said, Drake Wilkes has a count the bucket there by JP. JP with his first bucket of the ball game. College with the first His first team second. We know Javante Jones uh, will be out for the rest of the season. Of course, he had that uh, that injury. He throw up no good. Jackson State with the basketball. That's going to be Trayshawn Bolden. Goes up, shot good. That was a grown man move in that post. 
Nothing fancy about it. He just went right up. Ah. Oh. Just a miscommunication on the pick and roll. Look at this uh, on the replay right here. You can see it just... Just couldn't get the ball to him. So JP has the first bucket of the ball game. Trayshawn Bolden nearly losing it. Austin gets it off to Paris Collins. Shot up, no good. Ball is on the floor, and get it, it's uh, recovered by Drake Wilkes. Drake is one of those players that he's going to give you so many different intangibles that you're going to need. He can shoot the three relatively well. He can rebound and he can spread the floor for you. So we gotta definitely keep an eye out for Drake throughout the game. And here comes Jackson State University. We asked uh, the head coach Wayne Brent a couple weeks back about the challenges that he's had. And at one point in time, he had three of his big time players out because of injury. So he has really struggled with injury this year and last year. Terrence Collins is back in the lineup and he was one that they didn't know if he was going to be back and now he is. And he's been in and out. The doctor and foul on off against Austin. His first. Third two first person. It'll be grounding ball out of bounds. Just underway here in the first half. 17.55 remaining. Tied at two. And a steal here by Jackson State. Here's Doherty with the shot up and good. Basketball. Whiskey pass. Easy bucket. Uh-oh. Okay. And Paris Collins. Starting to get excited. Tapping the floor. He said, lock up. That's basically what he said. I'm here to lock you up. You're not scoring today. Oh, wow. Good strip. And the ball goes out of bounds. Attention. If you have a Toyota camp where you're looking at the ball game now for Jackson State University, that'll be number 204, Jeremiah Bowman coming in. License plate 1CT9930. Toyota camp. Jackson State, I'll tell you what, I'm talking in the bus staff. Chance Franklin had been out for a significant amount of time this year. Paris Collins had been out for a significant amount of time this year. Maurice Rivers, he had a couple of games that he missed as well as this year. So, man, I tell you what, when you got guys that have missed time and then you have to reintroduce them back on the team as far as getting them back in to get with the chemistry, that's tough. And a shot is blocked out of bounds and it's back to Bramble. And it definitely reflects the that swag player. You know, the lack of consistency because of all the different injuries definitely has shown in their record of being a 7-6 team. When, they, when we all know that Jackson State has so much talent and so much potential that they can play higher than a 7-6 ranking. They were in first place at one point. Uh, in this season. Oh, that's over to Devontae Jackson. Shot mm. good. Big three. Devontae Jackson hitting his first three pointer of the ball game. Five and four is our score. 16 43 remaining here in this first half of play. Victoria Black, Cletus and Mope joining you here from the Frederick C. Javi Assembly Center. Javi Smith Jr. to Devontae Jackson. Whoa, he kind of shook himself. <laughs> now Mo Brooks, he takes a three. Go! This guy is more. He was waiting for that shot for so long. He knew once he got it, it was all in popping. Jake, Drake Wilkes, one of those guys that was out because of injury a little bit. And without Anthony Gaston in the ball game, they will definitely need that. Austin with the rebound for Jackson State. Goes up, gets the bucket. Gremlins definitely going to have to limit these second chance opportunities. Too many of them to start the game with another one. Three pointers. Another three pointer. 
And that's assisted by Ivy Smith. Great presence to know where Drake Wilkes was on the floor. Wilkes gives you a Kyle Corver, J.J. Redick um, feel to the game or approach to the game. If it's open, he's knocking it down. Nice job by Drake, locking up Doherty. Oh. And a steal. Nice job, JP, by standing in the middle there. And of course, he's going to be fouled. That foul's going to be on Doherty. That'll be his first personal. And we have a media timeout on the floor with the score. Bramley on top, 11 to 6. We'll take this one minute timeout. One minute, we'll be right back. Top 11 to 6, 15, 24 remaining. Here's a three pointer by Dre Wilkes. Like I said, this man Wilkes, he's going to give you those buckets and he's going to be able to spread the floor. You give him any room beyond the arc, he is knocking down that three. You can tell he puts up a lot of shots and his form speaks for itself and it's going to be a great game. Rambling basketball. Bobby Smith, three-pointer on the way, in and out, no good. Jermaine Thomas trying to hit that big three-pointer. Collins will drive, shot off the window, good. A lot of screen and rolls that uh, Jackson State plays to get open, and once they see the mismatch and the coup. Oh, good floater. Nice. Kissed it right off the glass. Ivy Smith is his first bucket of the ball game. And check it. 13-8 our score. Grambling on top, 14-31 remaining here in the first half of play. Coming out of the ball game for Jackson State will be uh, Demetrius Clap or Clopton. Howard and Trayshawn Tray Go uh, Bolden back in the ball game. When you talk about a big kid, Trayshawn Bolden, 6'8", 250. He looks like a monster. And there's going to be a foul there on Graham. So you know he's going to play like a beast. That's going to be on Axel and Goyo. That's his first person. Axel, that's my guy. I love Axel. I love what he brings to this team. Another big body, versatile, durable, can play long minutes, pick up the slack if, ne if necessary. A lot of depth on this uh, Gremlin uh, roster. Bolden falls. Oh, they're going to call a tripping foul. Uh-oh. It's going to be on Ivy. That's his second person. Or that's first. It's going to be a second, yeah. And that could prove to be major in this ball game with him now having two personal fouls. He'll have to come out, and Nigel Rivera will have to come in. So now Rivera is going to, going to depend on him to really uh, run the point here. Ivy gives you so much more because he's a slasher. He's a scorer, really does a great job. But Nigel will give you those points. Timeout Jackson because they can't get the ball inbounded. And we have a timeout right here. So we'll take a timeout as well. With the score, Grambling 13, Jackson 8. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back.
Back here at the Fred C. Javi Assembly Center, Bolden will take a three-pointer. Good. Big guy steps out for a three-pointer. And for Trayshawn Bolden, he was 7 of 18 coming into the ballgame. That's his eighth three-pointer on the year. That kind of versatility is going to be very dangerous. A big body who could also shoot the rock as well as handle the post could definitely give Grandma some trouble. Ah! And now, that's out of bounds. It'll be Jackson basketball. And again, Trayshawn Bolden. But once you got a guy that can shoot like that, you got to make sure that, uh, you know, if he can, you're going to have to get out on him. But uh, really a 6'8 guy, he really hasn't proven that he can shoot a lot out there. Just seven three-pointers on the year. Oh, and look at the steal. Nigel Rivero with the basketball. A little shake and bait. Ooh. And he gets it popped out of there by Bolden. Oh, don't put my man Wilkes like that. Okay. And the shot up and good this time. It's by uh, Jeremiah Jefferson, the 6'2", Richard Jr. from Glen Heights, Texas, 13 off. Bradley with the basketball. Here's Shermaine Thomas goes in, no, nope. and right there with the putback is JP. JP already with four points in the ball game. And he will continue to do that all night, as well as get some alley-oops and some powerful dunks. Shot up, no good. The rebound by Axel. Here good comes. look up. Nice job. He's got eight points. Drake Wilkes trying to make some things happen. Three-pointer on the way by Jefferson, no good. Collins skies in and gets the rebound. He's in the middle of trees. He's throwing some bows down there. Here's a three-pointer by Doherty, way off the mark. Great ball movement, though. Three-pointer by Shermaine Thomas is no good. Just a little bit off the mark every time. But he's going to get that feeling. He's going to get that those threes to fall down um, down the stretch of this game. Collins shot. Good. Collins is definitely the energy guy for Jackson State. Plays a little erratic, but very controlled. And sometimes you, you definitely need that on your team. He averages 11 points a ball game. Here's Nigel Barrow, a little floating jumper. Good. Oh. The bottom of the net. Buckets are us. Those are the kind of buckets that they need. A lot of dangerous passes by Jackson State. Cross-court cross court passes, especially out of the press. Shot up Ooh. good. That's a big three by Lemmy Howard. Lemmy Howard with the shot. They only gave him a two-point bucket on that one. A freshman from... Belzoni, Mississippi. Yeah, no, it is Bill nowhere. <laughs> Been to Belzoni a couple times. <laughs> Time out on the floor with the score. Grambling State University on top of Jackson, 19 to 7. Take a look at the replay here, real quick, and see Paris Collins going back to the outside. And the big throw stepping outside and hitting the jump. We'll be right back here on.
Jackson with the ball. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Nigel Ribeiro up, no good. Jackson State with the rebound. Jackson State is definitely giving a lot of their, uh, uh, grambling a lot of room to take a lot of threes. If you haven't noticed, Jackson State is giving so much room behind the arc for Grambling to take those threes and those opportunities. But Grambling doesn't recognize that that could be the difference maker between this game being closer than it needs to be. Love goes up for the bucket. It's up. It's no good. Ball tipped around. Out of bounds, goes the other way to Grambling. Bobby Jackson will control the ball on the opposite side. Got a Nigel Rivera. Drake Wilkes, all about the three, now inside. Clinton Boyo, cross court to Nigel Rivera. Now, one thing Jackson is strong in is defense. Beautiful. And Poyo with the shot. Come and on! good! Buckets. Bucket. Silly goose. One coming up, and Poyo gets the bucket. Heavily co co contested mid range jumper. Both of the players went down hard. And it went, it's still, somehow, someway, Axel was able to make sure that ball found the bottle of that net. Shot up and good. It's in Poyo. Three point play the hard way, 22 17, Grambling on top. 941 remaining in the first half of play. Bowling with the ball, bounce pass to Austin. Shot up, no good, and run right over the head of Nigel Ribeiro. Bolden has quite a few inches on Nigel Ribeiro. 6'8 to 6'0, and 6'0 might be generous. It's going to be on the floor, charged to Grambling on that foul. That's going to be charged. To Devontae Jackson, that'll be his first personal. <laughs> Bolden drives the paint, blocked out of there. Coming with the basketball is Kareem Wright. Shot up, good, no good, and Austin with the rebound. Difficult shot. <laughs> Definitely should have given up the ball to Nigel Rivera that was uh, streaming and down to the corner. Kareem Wright right in the face of Bozeman, and they're going to call a foul on Wright. Have to move your feet. If Coach Dante Jackson oh, will take that foul. Oh, He'll take that foul because that's a hustle foul. It's not a, one of those lazy fouls. Mm -hmm. Kareem Wright is definitely uh, a name we rarely hear. <laughs> about in these games. Does not get a lot of playing time. Uh, probably because now that Gaston is out, definitely needs uh, him to step up and play a lot more minutes. But he has so much talent and such a potential and a lot of upside. So it's exciting to see what's next for him right. Here's a shot up, oh, good. Three pointer. Darius Austin. So for Darius Austin, that is his first bucket of the ball game. 22-20, Grambling on top. Bobby Jackson, nice cut, goes in for the bucket, no good, but he goes to the line. Great feed by Nigel Ribeiro. Sean Bolden will pick up that foul. This is the first. Big guy of Belzoni, Mississippi, and of course, the reason I've been to Belzoni once or twice, former player at Grambling State University back in the uh, mid-90s. Uh, Michael Tardy was from Belzoni, Mississippi, and had a chance to go to his hometown once. And it is, you gotta be going. <laughs> gotta head on up, going towards Valley, up by Vicksburg on 61, and keep on going that way. 
It just it bells on you to the right. So what is there to do in bells only? Nothing. Okay, so it's no point for me being there. <laughs> but they have good basketball players that come from bells only. Yeah. And Bobby Jackson misses this free throw. Shot up no good in Poyo. Thought he had to rebound. The putback is no good. There they're gonna wave that off. The ball is in the cylinder. It's gonna be goaltending, and it goes back to Jackson. Go back to Grambling. And Paris Collins, he is a firecracker. Not only as far as defense and stuff like that, but he's also a firecracker with his team. Uh, Coach Wayne Brent says sometimes he can be Dennis Rodman-ish. Oh, I could definitely see that. Very like, like I said earlier, erratic player, high energy player. Very expressive on the court and as well with the ball. It takes pride in defense, which you really don't see often in basketball these days. Ooh. Jackson with a three-pointer up no good. And rebound by Jackson State. Ball coming down to Lemmy Howard. Quite a few seniors on this Jackson State team. Jeremiah Jefferson is a senior. Maurice Rivers is a senior as well. Paris Collins, rather, is a senior. Maurice Rivers and Jeremiah Jefferson are both redshirt juniors. Big three, that number 13, Jordan Berry. So now Jordan Berry getting into the scoring at this first bucket of the ball game, and it's now 23-22. Jackson now on top. This is where you miss a player like Anthony Gaston. And as Coach Jackson says, next man up. Bobby Jackson, oh, he gets it tipped out of his hands. Now Paris Collins will control for Jackson State. He'll give the ball up to Julian Doherty. Carolyn definitely has to handle the ball a little bit better. Being very careless with the ball. Collins averages almost six assists the ball game. Here's the three-pointer up. Good. That's going to be Lenny Howard with another three-pointer. Coming off the bench, he gets seven points. Timing on the floor. And so we're taking a timeout, media timeout here as well. We'll take a timeout with the score 25-22. Grambling trailing 636 left in the first half. We'll be right back. Family road trips just got a whole lot easier. The 2018 Nissan Rogue. Now with Nissan Intelligent Mobility, featuring technologies like available ProPilot Assist, which helps keep an eye on the road ahead and helps you stay centered while you're turning this lane into memory lane. Get to Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics.
Oh. And it'll be Grambling basketball. Ivy Smith Jr. Controlling getting it to Drake Wilkes, and they break Jackson's press. Jackson did a great job in rotation on defense. Nice job, Javante Jackson can't hit the bucket. And the rebound by Jackson State University pulling it down, Darius Austin. That was an open busket, bucket. You gotta finish this. Jackson at one point in time was in first place, now in sixth place in the conference at seven and six. Ramblings at 10 and three, Arkansas Pond left. Nine and four, out of bounds, and then go back to Jackson. JP coming back into the ball game now for Grambling State University. We told you about uh, the games, of course. You got some big games coming up here. You look at uh, Texas Southern and Valley. The game everybody's watching is Prairie View at Arkansas Pond Bluff. Prairie View wins that game. Pond Bluff falls to nine and five. Grambling then is assured to still have first place when, uh, of course, uh, going into Monday's games. And don't forget, they beat Arkansas Pond Bluff as well. So right now, they have the tie break. Shot up, no good. Ivy Smith Jr. with the rebound. And that's going to be a foul. It's going to be charged. 31, Lemmy Howard. That'll be his first person. Let's watch the replay here. Just a little bit of a bump there by Lemmy Howard. It wasn't a heavy bump, but a bump enough to uh, knock Ivy off of his track. Now Ivy goes to the free throw line for the uh, Grambling Tigers. Ivy third in the conference in free throw percentage, 81.3%. As a matter of fact, when you look at the top three free throw shooters, G, uh, Reginald G at Alabama State, 81.7. Derek Bruce at Texas Southern, 81.7. Ivy Smith, 81.3. And then Deidre Petty from Alabama A&M, 81.0. That's how close it is. And Ivy Smith does himself some good, hitting both free throws. Get three points, you go and need them. Four points now for Ivy Smith. Barry for three, no good. Nice job by Devontae Jackson screening out. Paris Collins. Actually trailed Ivy the entire length of the court to show that he doesn't handle the ball. JP getting the ball, puts it on the ground, gets the ball back and puts it in. He has six points now. 26-25, Grammy on top. Gremlin, this extended press is, has been semi-detrimental. I would say, just because it, I don't think it has been as effective as they expected it to be, especially with all these long passes and Gremlin not being able to capitalize off of them in any way, shape, or form. Uh, do you believe it has to do with the height of the players? Well, I think part of it is because you look at Jackson as a, as a big team. A lot of speed, but they're a very big team. Wayne Brent and two guys that can move laterally. There's a shot up, no good. <clears throat> There's going to be a foul against Gremlin. That foul against Drake Wilkes. First person. But during the course of the game, you got to remember that teams are going to adjust according to what they see on the floor. Part of it may be execution, another part of it may be adjusting. It's a chess match when it comes to coaching basketball. And sometimes when you see things, you have to say, okay, well, this didn't work, let's readjust. Or it works if we do this. So it just depends. And we see Coach Dante Jackson doing that with this lineup that he has with Shermaine, Ivy, and Drake. Uh, very versatile bunch. You have one that's very athletic, which is uh, Shermaine. You have a, a floor general in the Ivy, and you have a, a deep threat with Drake. So this is definitely a chess match in comparison to the team that Jackson State is playing with on the floor right now. Shot up, no good. Rebound by Jackson State. That shot up is no good. And Austin did a wide, made a wise decision not reaching over the back. Avi Smith Jr. with the ball. Ivy taking the shot up, no good. Ball is tipped around, up, and pulled down by Paris Collins. That was rather an unorthodox rebound, but way to clear out and make some room for himself by Collins. Playing 
playing a high two three zone. Dory. Grambling doing a great job past Collins three, no good. Grambling with the rebound. Off the missed shot. And boy, that's what they're gonna need a lot of is making sure that Jackson doesn't get second chance opportunities. 329 left in the first half. Wayne Brick, head coach at Jackson State. Some of those guys to move around. Jermaine Thomas inside. Nice job. Devontae Jackson in and gets the bucket. Great looking, great feed by Shemaine. Jefferson on the opposite side of the floor is open momentarily. Inside to Austin. Austin, great presence, and is blocked out of there by JP. Putback is, is blocked out of there, and a putback is good. Three opportunities. Now that's something that I know Coach Jackson is, wants the guys is not to give Jackson State three opportunities at the bucket. The offensive rebound has been killing Gramlin, and this all comes down to boxing out. Obviously, we know that Jackson has a bigger team and a bigger lineup, but you have to get back to your intentions. Box out, make room for yourself to be competitive. That foul is good. Austin, and that's his second personal. We have a timeout on the floor with the score of the Grambling State University Tigers, 28. Jackson State University, 27. We'll take this timeout. We'll be right back. Jackson, and, tell you, and the Grambly Tigers are doing a good job of finding those guys on the inside. When you look at it in the paint, it's pretty even, 14 to 10, especially considering how much bigger and thicker a lot of these guys are for Jackson State University. Everything else is pretty even. Bench 9 to 5 in favor of Jackson, 7 for a second chance points in favor of Grambly. Free throw up and good by Ivy Smith Jr. That's his third in a row at the charity strike. Rebounds 19 to 16 in favor of Jackson State. It's the offensive boards 9 to 3 is where the real number is. And the second point opportunities as well. As well as also Grambling's high shooting ability. They're 3 and 6, play, uh, 50% uh, from behind the arc. Uh, two of them coming from Drake Wilkes. Tigers now 5 of 8 forward from the free throw line. Jackson State has yet to go to the free throw line according to the stats. And they are playing relatively aggressive, so there is a reason for that. Nice job by JP standing in the lane of Doherty. Here comes Ivy Smith. And it could have been a foul there because he tried to reach around and hit the ball for Ivy Smith. Ooh. Well, he's really aggressive. Smith with the shot, no good. And the rebound. Barry had it. Oh. Gremlins will have to play very aggressive with this Jackson State team. Very physical team. Very big team, like we've been saying. And you see it from how chippy they are on defense that this Jackson State team really is desperate for this win. See what Wayne Brent has done a great job. He's two of his assistant coach, former Jackson State greats, Daeswan Burke, Daeswan Jackson, and Kaysen Burke. Beautiful. Shot up and good. <laughs> Axel with the bucket. I remember seeing both of those guys play this one. Dixon, of course, has some great shooting ability, and Casey Burke could light it up when he wanted to as well. Three-pointer on the way up, no good. JP with the rebound. Jackson's just not hitting threes today. Look at Ivy Smith. Try to get it inside to Emporio. And a turnover there by Graham. 32-27. Minute 27 remaining until halftime. Nice 
blocked by JP. Eight seconds left on the shot clock for Jackson State. And that ball goes out of bounds. Oh, Jackson and back to Grambling. One thing I've noticed about Grambling State, they have really forced Jackson State to use all of their shot clock. And that's something that you rarely see, and that shows how defensive my Coach Jackson is with this new Grambling State team. You see the replay here. Of course, you see where the big guy, number 31, Lenny Howard, trying to get the bucket. Now, Ivy Smith with the basketball. Goes in for the shot. Good! Ivy Smith. Seven points. That's going to be on number 13, I believe, Jordan Berry. Way to finish by Ivy Smith. Very difficult shot to finish. Off balance, right off the glass. 34-27, Grambling extending their lead to seven points with under a minute remaining in the first half of play. Of course, next week, the Tigers will take on Pond Bluff, which is a huge game on Saturday. And then, of course, the Mississippi Valley will wrap up the home schedule on Monday. Nadja Rivera will come into the ball game to give Ivy Smith a little bit of a rest. They got two guys back for Jackson State. Three-pointer on the way up, no good. Ball tipped, Paris Collins with the rebound. The shot is up, no good, but he's going to the line to shoot two. That's going to be on Nanjo Rivero. That'll be his first person. Thirty-seven point eight remaining in the first half. Paris Collins going to the free throw line. Shoots sixty-seven point five percent. And he misses the first one. And this is the first time that Jackson State has made it to the line. Yep. One more at the charity strike. One or two at the line for Paris Collins. Thirty-five seconds left on the game clock. Seven second differential between the shot clock and the game clock now. And Ivy Smith will just hang outside until it's time. Coach Wayne Brent telling these guys to kind of get over a little bit. Charmaine Thomas for three. Good! Nothing but net. Ivy Smith, great job of being patient and then the pass over to Charmaine Thomas. Yikes. Shot is up. No good. Ivy Smith has to get out of his halftime. Scoring Bradley 38. And Jackson 28. Let's go back to the replay there, uh, Peters. You see Shermaine Jack from our side of the arc hitting that big three after Ivy took his time to set up this, uh, set up that easy three before the half. This is Cleese from Obey. Stay back. We'll be right back.
here at the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center here on the campus of GSU, the Grammy Tigers. Right now with a 10 point lead over Jackson State University, 38 to 28, and a lot of that had to do with the tempo of the game that they really started to put on Jackson late to first half. Of course, Ivy Smith Jr. has played in a phenomenal game. Shermaine has played a phenomenal game. Drake Wilkes, Mr. Big Three, has been hitting amazing, uh, phenomenal threes from beyond the arc, as well as having Nigel B. Rivera being able to come off the bench and give a lot of points and energy as well. So we should expect a lot of excitement in this second half. Three-pointer by Jackson State University to start things out here in the second half. And that's something that they're going to have to watch for. With Jackson State University, where I saw when they play all corner, here's a drive and the shot blocked out of there, Shermaine Thomas on the drive. But when Jackson played all corner, they allowed all corner to really just kind of hang in there. And they kept hanging and hanging and hanging. And pretty soon, Alcorn, who was down double digits, came back and put that game really close and took the lead. Jackson had to have some Thoreaux and come back and win that ball game. And a turnover there by Jackson. Jermaine Thomas can't control it. And it goes back to Jackson State. What I'm, what I'm expecting to see Jackson actually do this next half is attack the basket a lot more. Uh, they were a lot more effective at 30.8% in the first half uh, within field goal range. Anything past the, past the arc, they were about 20% at three. So they only hit about three out of 15 three-pointers in the first half. Trayshawn Bowling can't hit the shot. Devontae Jackson with the rebound and a foul coming up. Are they going to call oh, carry oh, on Devontae man. Jackson? You got to get the ball up to your guard, big fella. 38-31, Grambling on top. 1907 remaining here in the ball game. And of course, as we said, this is a game that Jackson definitely needs to win because there's a long jam from fourth place all the way down to sixth place. All those teams with seven wins. Alabama State with six wins. Alcorn five wins. So all those teams are right next to each other. Here's a three-pointer. Shot up, good. Way to change the trajectory, a big three. That's Darius Austin, 38-34, Grambling on top now by just four. 6-0 run to start things off here in the second half. You know, the last time that these two teams played was in Jackson, Mississippi, and that was the first loss that Jackson took in conference play. Tremaine Thomas for three, no good. And Devontae Jackson with the rebound. Bounce pass to JP. He goes up no good. And these two teams, of course, as we said, played early on this season. Two big opportunities missed by Grambling State. They have to capitalize on those second point opportunities. Maurice Rivers was a leading scorer for Jackson State. Three-pointer on the way up no good. JP with the rebound. Was knocked out of his hands. And here comes Adi Smith Jr. Smith with an acrobatic shot and a foul coming up against Jackson State. That foul is going to go against Darius Austin. That will be three on him. That's big because Austin is a huge part of this Jackson offense. And by far one of the better shooters on this Jackson offensive team. Uh, you've seen that he was able to get a consecutive uh, three-point basket right before this possession. So we see that he can get high and shoot the ball at high percentages. as well as just being another big body on the court. Versatile player. They wipe up some of the sweat off of the floor. 17-48 remaining here in this ball game. Tigers on top, 38-34. to It was a 38-28 lead at halftime. And it looks like uh, Bobby, or Devontae Jackson, has to come out of the game because they saw blood. Ooh. That's not good. So now Ivy Smith Jr. will be at the free throw line. Stay free. 1748 remaining here in the ball game. On the day, Jack uh, Gramlin has been 69% uh, at the free throw line. So you have to maximize these. These are free points, especially with a four point game. You need all the points that you can, you can get to create that gap. There's no question about that. First free throw up, no good. And oh. more Avi Smith 
normally a great free throw shooter, misses this one here. Second free throw up and good. Right back to the full court press. Trey Sean Bolden with the ball. Bolden's 250 pounds. That's a kick ball. Goes out of bounds. Off the judge. This is the first time we've seen the press actually lead to a turnover throughout the whole entire game. Well, here's one of the reasons why. When you got a guy like Bolden that brings the ball up the floor and then has to pass the ball, you see those guys coming to the passing lanes a lot more, and that forces you to either pass the ball where you don't want to, or you're going to have to dribble where you don't want to. That's what happened there. And Drake Wilkes with the ball. Well, you talk about some tough defense, and that's what Wayne Brent is known for, is tough defense. Jermaine Thomas, three-pointer on the way, go! Jermaine Thomas just head up, and a three-pointer flushed. Paris Collins with the ball. That's a steal. And another steal here for the Grambling Tigers, and now a steal by Jackson. Doherty has the ball. Doherty goes in, can't hit the shot. Jermaine Thomas with the rebound. Go to alter that. Easy two-point. Drake Wilkes for three, no good. Ball is on the floor. Wilkes tried to get it. Collins has it. And a timeout by Jackson State as Collins was on the floor with the basketball. Well, a lot of scrambling going on between these two teams. 42-34 is the score. Grambling is on top with 16-52 remaining here in the ball game. We're going to take a timeout. We come back more from here at the Emergency Hobby Assembly. We'll be right back. here at the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center here on the campus of Grambling State University. 42-24 is the count. Obviously, it's with 10 points already in double figures for the Grambling Tigers. Look on the other side, you got a lot of guys that are scoring right now. One of their key guys, though, Darius Austin, with eight points, has three personal fouls. He's a major part of that offense, plays a good inside-out ball game. Austin with the ball right now, draws a double team, and that's why you, that's, when you play the, the press right, that's what happens. Gremlin continues to put this pressure on this press, and they're looking for this long ball over the middle, and that's where they have Ivy. You have Drake up on the, the ball handle or the inbounder. Then you have that long pass over the middle that they go keep looking for. See, that's like the, one of those opportunities to make a, a major play or a major steal. And that's what happens. They're, they're playing that uh, press really good. And by virtue, really by rule, teams that press don't like to be pressed. And Jackson State, very good at pressing the foot, uh, basketball when they want to. Nice job collapsing on the ball. Bolden with the ball. Gets it to Austin. A little bit of a mismatch as far as some size. And another one. And look at that. Another shot block violation. What I don't think a lot of people realize with that full course press, it takes off about 10 seconds on average of the shot clock just to get the ball over the court. That's right. So before they know it, they have about 20 seconds to make a decision, to make a play, and that's, that's hard for against this Grambling State defense. That's a good point because now all of a sudden you come across the half court line and you know you got 30 seconds. You come across here and now you got 20 seconds to set things up and you can see Coach Wayne Brent <laughs> kind of wondering, you know, we got to make some things happen here. Ivy Smith Jr. to JP. Great Wilkes looked like the ball was partially tipped. Out of Empoyo, ball is tipped out of bounds. Grambling basketball. There's one thing I would bet my bottom dollar on, and that is that Jake will not miss twice in a row. 
As a pure shooter, you usually don't miss twice in a row if given the opportunity. Coming in the ball game now, Austin will come out, and coming in the ball game will be Lenny Howard. Kind of helps a little bit here because of the foul situation. You can tell Jackson playing some really tight defense right now. Shot up, no good, they're gonna call offensive foul, and Coach Dante Jackson not happy about that call, and more over three on our Trying to figure out how that ha how is that an offensive foul. I'd have to see the replay on that. I, I don't know if that's an offensive foul. He drew contact, but it wasn't a drastic push on the forearm. That shot up by Lemmy Howard, good. Lemmy Howard coming off the bench, scoring eight points now. Knocked down. Drake Wilkes for three. Bang, bang, bang. Third one of the game. Timeout. <laughs> Are they going to call timeout here? No timeout. Uh, Ivy uh, pressed on the inbounder and were able to take the ball out. We have a timeout on the floor. Grambling has extended their lead to nine now. 15.43 remaining here in the ball game. We'll take this timeout. We'll be right back here on GSU TV. Who's the DJ? here at the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center on the campus of Grambling State University. The Grambling Tigers on top 45 to 36 with 15.43 remaining here in the ball game. And as you see, Avi Smith Jr. coming onto the floor. He's in double figures with 10 points, but more importantly, he's got three fouls, please. He has to play a little bit smarter. Obviously, he sees that the refs are calling a little more of the ticky-tack fouls. And as a leader on his team, they're going to definitely need him down the stretch. Yeah, there's no question about that. And you can see Avi. I can see why they why they had that offensive foul there, but uh, to me, Paris was really really close. That's a, that's a good play there by Paris Collins. Here's a shot up and good. Darius Austin, like we said earlier, he's going to hit those threes if you give him those opportunities. He can shoot the ball relatively well, and he's going to be able to. Drake Wilkes on the other side can't hit the bucket. Usually he's spot on with those. He had 18 in the game against uh, Southern University. Of course, he was injured earlier. Paris Collins for three. It's up. It's no good. Oh, a little bit of a foul there. Boy, it's really physical out there. Here's Ivy Smith, three-pointer. Go! Buckets are rough. Now you see a little bit of this press going on here. Doherty now coming to the near side. Got to stay away from over there if you're Jackson State. Dory out of Austin. Trying to get it to Trayshawn Bolden so he can be one-on-one -on -one with JP. Collins, three-pointer, good. That's the first of the night for Collins. That first three-pointer, eventually can't leave him out there. Again, he's uh, third on the team in scoring right now. Nice job getting into Axel. It goes out of bounds off of Jackson State. And it will stay with Grambler. Definitely some contact on that play. Bro. No call. 48-42 the score. Jackson State University will send in with 25, Jesse Love, 6-1 guard from Jackson.
Both of these coaches very good on the recruiting circuit. Tremaine Thomas falling away, no good. <clears throat> and Howard with the rebound now for Jackson State. Sleeting needed a little bit more on that step back jumper. Good look though, very good look. Tremaine Thomas coming up on the zone now. Rotation here will be very important. Treshawn Bolden now. Pops it back out. Austin, long three-pointer, no good. But the shot clock expired, and that's going to be a shot clock. No, it's going to be a fresh 30 now because he hit the rim just before it expired, and that's blocked out of there by Axel and Poyo. Sleep. Peekaboo. He did not see that at all. No. Axel flew right in like Superman. Still 48-42 the score, 13-14 remaining in the ball game. Jackson's had the ball now for almost a minute, and now here comes Grambling off the turnover. Great job by Ivy. Gets it to Sherman Thomas. Thomas goes into the bucket, no good. Rebound by Jackson State. Looked nice, but very difficult layup to make. Came from right to left and go underneath and put it right over the middle of the rim. That's too do much. It. Couldn't do it. Love with the ball, now gets it over to Doherty. Three-pointer on the way up, no good. Ball tipped around, and Ivy Smith Jr. with the rebound for Grambling. If you're Grambling at this point, you just want to control the tempo of this game. You want to take a little time. We've seen a lot of back and forth without any conversions. At this point, you want to just take your time, set up a play, and control the tempo. Of course, Ivy Smith Jr., Swag Basketball Player of the Week, third time this season. Great mismatch. Ball tipped around. Boy, Sherman Thomas going in hard with it. And Austin comes away with the board. Sean Bolden now to Austin. Here's a three-pointer on the way. Good. Let me have it. Let me have that one. Six, seven, freshman. He has so much upside and has so much potential as a freshman. We're definitely going to hear more about him. You look at Lenny Howard. He's not, he's not like he's setting the world on fire. He's only averaging 2.3 points a game. He's already in double figures. And one. Yeah. Ivy Smith with the bucket. And a timeout on the floor with the score of 50 to 45. And look at Ivy Smith going in high off the backboard and getting the bucket. And we've got a media timeout on the floor with the score of 50 to 45. We'll take this timeout. 11.34 remaining in the ball game. We'll be right back. Program. We love giving back. And if anyone has the opportunity to join the ROTC, they should do it because it's a life changing. Back here at the shooting one for Grambling, where the Grambling Tigers up 50 to 45 with 11:34 remaining in the contest on Jackson State University, and Ivy Smith Jr. will go to the free throw line. You look at Ivy Smith Jr. Changed a lot, of course, his career high 31 against Tuvalu back in December of 2017. This one off the rim, Axel Mpoyo with the rebound. It's going to be a jump ball, ball, ball to the possession to Grambling. That's just heads up play defensively by Jackson State to tie the ball up as the player was coming down. That's two free throws that's missed by Ivy today, which is relatively rare. Like we said, Ivy is an 81% shooter, 81.3% shooter from the free throw line. So 
and he's going to get there. So we hope that he's going to be able to convert on them down the stretch because he's going to need these are all free points. They're free. They're free. And some of the best things in life are free. Free. So Jay, it's a song uh, from the Mo Money soundtrack with Damon Wayans back in the 90s by, uh, done by Luther Vandross and Janet Jackson. Mm. Best things in life, free. Uh, free. Devontae Jackson goes in, draws a foul. It's going to go against number 21, Demetrius Clopton. Uh, From Columbus, Ohio, red shirt, freshman 6'9". Big body, 255. So he's going to definitely cause some congestion in that paint. Free throw up, and good. Yeah, you know, you talked about uh, bringing, he's going to bring more congestion than a chest cold. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really does have a big body. And when you talk to the coaching staff, he's they, he's not even filled out the way that they want him to yet. He could be one of those guys that could really be a premier center in the league. Oh, by far. And if you see, even just looking at him on the court, his dominance is already apparent. He is by far the biggest on the court. Shot up, no good. Ooh. Trickles ain't good. Kiss, kiss, kiss off that glass. Maybe Howard making a big, big game, 13 points so far in the contest. Bobby Smith Jr. shot up, no good. And the rebound by Clopton. Barry with the basketball. Wow. Another foul. Yeah, this time it's going to go against Jackson State. <laughs> but Jackson, it'll go against Grambling. Right? Oh, Nigel Rivera. Nigel Rivera with his second person. And we see that they have um, Dante Jackson does, Coach Dante Jackson does this from time to time. So I call it the two headed uh, offense when he has a uh, Ivy as a point guard and a Nigel as a shooting guard, two ball handles that can handle the rock and uh, could give you points and could command the offense. It's gonna be a foul. That wow. time, Ivy Smith, four. Wow. And with 10-31 left in the ball game, they gotta come get him. <laughs> Ivy got hit in the face and he was like, I got the foul called him, he is upset. Yeah, Coach Jackson not too happy because of his position. Cost him a foul, and now the best, well, the floor general of this team is now not on the floor, and that's going to really cost him. Lemmy Howard, 13 points for Jackson State. Shot up good. Fifty-two forty-nine. now the score. Lemmy has been playing relatively good today. 15 points on the day, giving you consistent buckets. Fifty-two forty-nine, approaching ten minutes left in the ball game. Bobby Jackson, fallaway jumper, no good. Oh, oh. Trayshawn Bolden with the rebound after the miss. That's an offensive oh, foul. Great job by Emporio, and that's going to be on Trayshawn Bolden. If you're ever looking for an easy way to change the trajectory of the game and shift the momentum. Take a charge. It's one of those things that when everyone is chippy and someone just takes that charge, it's like, really, man? Really? Right. Trayshawn Bolden, you know, he's, he's a big guy in there, 250. But just a great job by Empoyo just standing his ground in there and just taking that charge. And sometimes that's what you need. Like you said, it's a one of those things where you can raise the level of intensity. You know, it's just one of those things like you're sacrificing your body for the team. As well as now you're thinking about it every time you're the offensive player at, about how you will uh, attack the basket. Because you got to be wary now that you know that he potentially will fall down and you'll get that charge for him. So you won't be as aggressive as you think you'll be. Paris Collins. Of course, we told you. He's been, that, he's been the fire plug, the spark plug sometimes, and Jackson's going to be in that press. Drake Wilkes spinning out of trouble. 
to Bobby Jackson. Boy, he got Tremaine Thomas wide open out there. Shot is up, no good, but he draws a foul. That foul is going to go against Lemmy Howard. That'll be two on him. Great job by Drake Wilkes. He really controlled the ball well, and then Devontae Jackson just doing a great job spinning, going towards the bucket, trying to get it up. That was an aggressive move, and it definitely had his defender on skates. Ooh, that was right in. Went in with a prayer, actually. Sometimes you got to have those. Beautiful. Shot up good, 54-49 to score. Collins, out to Lemmy Howard. I should say that's gonna be 23, and that's gonna be Darius Austin for the three-pointer. Four three-pointers in a game, 14 points. And how about this, Lemmy Howard, 15 points. He's never led the team in scoring this season. But well, we've always said that he has that for such a beautiful spin. Nice job by Jermaine Thomas. He's got eight points now. Said, so now you see me, now you don't. 8.34 remaining in the contest. Three pointer by Barry. Sheesh. Not sure why they stopped play there for a second. That was a big flip, very big flip. And you see Paris Collins, he's a little crazy. It's okay, you need that player, you need that spark plug, you need that energizer bunny on the, someone has to be the emotional leader on this court. He's chippy, he's gritty, he's, he wants to win. And that's what you want. At the end of the day, as a coach, you want a player that's going to compete. Beautiful play. Look at this! Buckets, buckets, buckets. Call for the alley-oop, 58-55, under eight now in the ball game. And this Gremlin crowd is now back in this game. Another three-pointer by Jackson State, no good. And Devontae Jackson with the rebound. That was a big stop. Thomas going right around Austin, shot up no good. Blocking foul coming up. And that's going to go against Lemmy Howard, it looks like. That's three on him. And we have a timeout on the floor with the score 58 55. Now let's look at the replay here, real quick. Grambling up by three, seven and a half remaining here in the ball game. You see Bobby Jack, or I should say Devontae Jackson, and look at that alley oop. To Axel up, Porter. up and away. We'll take a timeout. Don't worry, where we'll be right back, right here on GSU TV. Back here at the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center, and when you play Atomic Dog and you've got the Omegas in the house, there's an instant step show that starts to happen. Man, these brothers are not tight. I always wonder how Qs don't have asthma. 
Like if you're a Q with an asthma, can you can you do this? Because no. that happened as athleticism at its finest. Oh yeah, you got to be you, you cannot have probably asthma and do that. And right? they unless own beat. you have like you know your an inhaler, inhaler or something. Or something. Like that over here. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't be an atomic dog, you'd be a wheezy dog. <laughs> as asthmatic dog. Asthmatic dog, right. <laughs> 59-55, the score 7-31 remaining. Shermaine Thomas hitting the first of two. Speaking of the first of two, next, this is only the first, this is only the only game that these uh, two teams will have this weekend. They're each other's travel partners. Next weekend, they'll both be at home to take on Pond Bluff and Valley. Pond Bluff will be here in Grambling on Saturday. Valley will be at Jackson on Saturday. And then they'll finish off the home schedule. Valley will be here against Grambling on a week from Monday. Austin with the basketball. Paris Collins really trying to fight with Bobby Jackson. Austin drives, shoots. No good. Ball tips. And it comes down to Gramlin. Down the floor. Bobby Jackson. What a job in running the floor. Great pass by Nigel Ribeiro. Way to, that's a football pass right over the top. Coach Five needs to come sign him up. That was a tremendous catch. Doherty thought about the three travel. Oh, they're going to call a foul on the floor. Thought wow. he traveled. That's that going to be so on Nigel Ribeiro. That is such a debatable call. And that's three on him. So now you got two of your guards in major foul trouble, 646 remaining. Three for Nigel, four for Ivy. If you're, if you're Coach Jackson, who do you go to next? Because you don't have Anthony Gasson in, 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 your, in your lineup today, and that's where he would be a huge asset. Well, if you're, you're probably going to have to tell Nigel not to make any more fouls right now. Seven points, and here's the other thing. You go into overtime with this team, they're going to come after your guards. Paris Collins in the shot, no good. That's going to be a foul coming up on Gramlin. Uh, I believe it's going to be on De uh, Devontae Jackson. It's only his second. Three-pointer on the way up. Oh, an air ball. Shermaine Thomas with the basketball. Bad chance taken by Jackson. Empoyer with the shot. No good. Off the mark. Goes out of bounds. Off of Grambling. Back to Jackson State. Axel has the lane. He should have just went up and dunked it on somebody. Or at least went for a higher percentage shot than a baseline uh, jumper. One of the biggest issues that you really have when you start looking at that kind of a jumper is that you got to make sure somebody's on the other side crashing the boards. As well. Take a look at the rebounding edge. And it was to Jackson State for that last time out, 34-32. Austin looking on the inside. Yes, Howard. Barry, bounce pass inside to Howard. Draws a double team. Howard, little jump hook, no good. And Empoyo does a great job securing the basketball. A lot of reaching going on. That's going to be a foul. It's going to be a one and one coming up for Grammy. Grambling on the night is 11 for 16 from the free throw line, soon as 68%, a little under 70%, uh, which has been relatively, and, and actually in comparison to Jackson, Jackson only been to the line one time tonight. Well, you know, and, and here's the other thing, a couple of things here. Jackson's very good defensively, but they struggle at times offensively. We've seen that before. So now what they've got to really start doing, if you're Grambling, you just have to make sure you keep playing on your side of the floor. You can see Jackson can run with it. Paris Collins, the Tasmanian Devil, gets it off. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Nice job by Sherman Thomas. Thomas thought about the long throw. Bobby Jackson getting the ball. Paris Collins took a chance there. Nigel Ribeiro. Oh, try to get it for Sherman Thomas. Just too much on it. Yeah, it was a little too high. Just too much on it. He didn't even have to make that hard of a pass. He was wide open. Dump it right to him. Look before you pass. Julian Doherty with the basketball. He's defended by 
Naj Rivera's got to watch the fouls, though. Lemmy Howard. Back out to Jordy, now to Barry. There's Collins. Lemmy Howard with a shot. Up, no good. Ball tipped. Grabbed by Devontae Jackson. Pass out to Shermaine Thomas. Thomas one on one with Doherty. Goes up for the shot, no good. Ball tipped. Surprise, no call at all. Barry. Three pointer by Collins, no good. Howard with the rebound. Now Barry a three pointer. Off the mark, no good. Howard with the rebound. Now another three pointer on the way, no good. Three opportunities. Three opportunities to knock down a three. No one could drop. You've noticed that this Jackson State team has tried, kind of lived and died by the three tonight. Uh, we don't see high percentages from within the paint, and we don't see them attacking the basket, and that's probably why there's a lack of free throws attempts on their side. And they got to wipe some uh, sweat off, off the floor. As a team, they're shooting uh, about 34% from the three-point line. Nigel Barrow says, y'all up on my back. Jackson, second in the conference in three-point percentage. So you kind of live by the three, die by the three, like you said. They believe if you can make a high percentage of three-pointers at times, you can you can win a ball game. But when they're not falling like that, it can be a problem. Nice job in oh. oh, foul. Howard fouls in Poyo. And so was about to go up and try to dunk on that man. Now, here's a, here's a point of order for the shot, and Howard makes the foul. We have to take a timeout on the floor. 62-55, Grambling on top. We'll be right back. He was about to go up on that man. Here in the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center, 62-55 to score. Grambling on top, 356 remaining in the ball game. You look at Lemmy Howard and you look at Austin, Darius Austin. Both those players lead the team 15 and 14. It's combined 29 of the 55 points for Jackson State University. More importantly, both now with four personal fouls to go along with Trayshawn Bolden with four fouls. And those are your scoring leaders. They are the ones that have been keeping uh, Jackson State in this game and keeping the game as close as possible, being able to give you a dynamic three when necessary, being able to attack the basket when necessary, get big boards as well, and play very solid defense. So we have to see what these, uh, what coach uh, would have to do to make those adjustments moving down the stretch. 64-55, now a nine-point lead here for the Grambling Tigers. Paris Collins, how about this? You're a guard and you're leading the team in rebounding. 11 rebounds for Paris Collins, eight points, six assists. Parents Collins, he's going to do anything that's necessary for this team to be competitive. We've noticed that if it means the, uh, playing extra tight defense, if it means uh, getting rebounds, if it means taking big shots, he'll do whatever is necessary. Out of bounds, back to Graham. Oh. Ivy Smith Jr. getting ready to check back into the ball game. 326 left in the contest. Nigel Barrow got uh, two points in the contest, three fouls. And that's played uh, big minutes for this Grambling State Tigers team. Now, Trayshawn Bolden, you go right at him if you're uh, Devontae Jackson, and he lost control of the ball. Oh. Jackson basketball. You sure? Definitely went off his foot. 
Looked like it went off of, of uh, Bolden's foot. You see uh, Bobby Jackson, or I should say Devontae Jackson coming across. Mm, yeah, it was off his foot. Jackson State got away with one. Crowd is starting to heckle Austin a little bit. Howard goes up for the shot, partially blocked. Shermaine Thomas with the rebound for Grambling. 251 remaining in the ball game, and now the Tasmanian Devil, Paris Collins, getting ready to come back in the ball game. Harvey Smith. That ball flies out of bounds. Coach Ellis is a part of the Grambling family, but I don't think he's on the floor playing right now. Shemaine <laughs> just has to play within his role. He's trying to create points that are just not there and opportunities that are just not there. He needs to take his time and set the offense up. If, it's not, if the shot is not there, don't try to make a harder shot. 64-55, Grambling on top, 224 remaining in the contest. Treshawn Bolden and Lemmy Howard both on the floor with four fouls. Hey, help! Doherty will drive. Nice drive by Doherty. And Jackson, they had two guys going for the ball at the same time and ended up knocking the ball out of each other's hands. Lack of communication and ball awareness. Slightly. And oh. Paris Collins picks the pocket of Ivy Smith Jr. Now Paris Collins trying to control it. He goes up for the bucket. Good. Boy, that is just absolute one to right there. They stop the uh, clock. 147 remaining in the ball game. It's over, boy. It's over. 147 standing between one of Grandma's top uh, winning streaks of all time. Yeah, of every game. yeah since joining Division One, they haven't won 11. And then, of course, uh, winning 11 games, you got to go back into the 70s when Larry Wright was playing. Uh, if there was, I'm, and I'm not even sure before that because some of the stats are a little sketchy. Mm -hmm. But I know after Larry Wright played, one of the best seasons that we had was in the 79-80 season when Martin Lamell played. Not Martin Lamell that is a current vice president here, but his father. Oh, I was going to say, Martin Lamell played well? He seemed like he did. That, that was, was a very good basketball player. Like maybe he got a three-pointer or something, but he don't know he really balled like that. Yeah, Martin Lamell uh, played, his dad did. And of course, they went 22-8 and eight that year, 8-4 and four in the conference. That was in the 79 and 80 season. Graham playing a little keep away with the basket. And uh, they gave it right back to Jackson State. Here comes Paris Collins. Collins goes up for the shot. Good. Can you believe this? Paris Collins now has 12 points. And a near steal foul by Paris Collins. 14 remaining, 64-59. You can hear the situation. You can hear the excitement by the Grandma State fans. A little bit. Grand Fam is in the building. You do not want to get on Grand Fam's basket. Uh oh. It will be really bad for you. That is true. <laughs> Nigel Ribeiro going to the free throw line. Doesn't average but six points a ball game. From Chesapeake, Virginia. A lot of things that Nigel does is doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but he is so essential for this Grambling State um, uh, um, basketball team. And that's one of the things when you can go up to the line and make some free throws. Especially down the stretch with 114, only six-point game. Extending this lead, making it difficult for the defense or for Jackson State to be able to make a run. Misses. Big miss. Three-pointer, no good. Rush three, definitely unnecessary three, but that was a desperate three. Collins is still playing full-court defense, not playing shy at all. And a timeout by Graham. We'll take a break. 65-59, 51 seconds left. We'll be right back.
Back here at the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center, 65-59 the score, Grambling on top. 51 seconds remaining in the ball game. 51 seconds separate Grambling from their 11th straight win in conference play. Roger Bear with the basketball. You can see Jackson starting to put pressure on. It's going to be a blocking foul. That's going to be on Paris Collins' second personal. Oh, check that. That is going to be on Julian Doherty. Makes the free throw. At this point, I don't know if I would say that's a good foul to make. Obviously, you stop the clock, you get the ball back, you got an opportunity to uh, score a quick two or a quick three, and then play a hard defense, a foul again. But Nigel Rebell hits free throws. Well, he's struggled a little bit this year because he hasn't been to the line as, as frequently, but he's three or four tonight. And if he does get into a rhythm, he can hurt you with those free throws. And he has that veteran leadership. Shot up, no good. Foul coming up on Grambling. Wow. Let's see who's going to be charged to. Jackson, I believe it is. Devontae Jackson, that's his third. Just think about this. This is what the fourth... Third time, third or fourth time that Jackson has been to the free throw tonight. Yeah, that's that's detrimental to any team. You have to attack the basket. You have to get those free points because that could be that could have been the difference between an eight-point game, like we see now, and a a complete different shift of the pendulum. And you got to hit them. There's Collins missing. One more free throw. 67-59 the score. Fun fact, Paris Collins is the only player today to have gone to the free throw line. The only one. The only player. Oh. And he's 0 for 2. Wow. 1 for 4 on him day. And a foul coming up against Jackson. Going to be Paris Collins uh, second or first? third and just think about this and here's here's why Jackson struggles has struggled especially late last in the conference in free throw shooting yeah by far 64 percent and the issue comes down to is they play really tough defense and they they really depend on the defense to really do what they need to do and if you kind of take a look at what they've done they're number one in scoring offense they're averaging 69 points a game you see they're at 59 right now with 27 seconds left now you have Darius Austin as that has shown to be your number one scorer today. But besides him, there really hasn't been that many players that was able to step up, especially when it comes down to hitting those big shots down the down the um down the game down the road, as well as being able to create point opportunities for themselves. We haven't seen that at all. 69, 61, 19.9 seconds remaining in the ball game. Grambling will have the basketball. You see head coach Deontay, uh, Dante Jackson kind of giving instructions. One of the things he's going to tell us guys, if they get the ball back, don't foul. Of course not. If we, as, we're, and as we're getting the ball in, they're going to press, they're going to press, keep that ball moving until you get it on this side of the floor and don't get caught on the sidelines or by the half court line. Because as I told you, the reason why Jackson was very effective early on the season, remember, first half of the season, Jackson State University went eight and one. Their only loss, was against Grambling. I'm sorry, they went uh, they went the first half of the season and they they really played well, 71 I believe it is. So now all of a sudden, they have struggled immensely. A lot of it has to do with injuries. It'll be Grambling basketball still. If you take a look at uh, what Jackson did in the conference season, first half, they won five in a row. To start the conference season, six in a row, rather. After that, lost three in a row. Grambling Valley, Pond Bluff, they beat off where they've lost five out of, or six out of their last seven ball games. Poyo! 
you see the best saying, raise the roof. It's time to take the elevator to the top floor. Three-pointer. And at this point, it is going to be pointless. 71-64, the final. Grambling wins it, 11 in a row. History making, going on with Coach Dante Jackson. We will take a timeout, and when we come back, we'll have head coach Dante Jackson on here on the uh, on press row. We'll take this timeout. We'll be right back. Thank you. the Assembly Center on the campus of Grambling State University. Grambling Beach Jackson State sweeps the season series 71-64. History is in, is in order here. 11 in a row now. 11 in a row, yeah. We're, we'll take it. We'll take the 11. It wasn't our best game, but as they always say, I'd rather, I'd rather win ugly than lose pretty. Right. Now, of course, we didn't have Anthony Gaston involved in tonight. But talk about the guys really stepped up. Well, you know, we didn't have Anthony. Anthony turned his uh, ankle at the Texas Southern game, and we had a coming in here, he's been our glue guy. He's been one of those guys that defend well, make shots. But we had some guys step up off the bench. Drake Woods came in, made big time shots throughout the game. Nigel Rivero stepped up. Bobby Jackson stepped up. And XL Mapoyo, man, you can't talk enough about our kids and how they how they compete at.
at a high level every night. Defensively, Coach, that's where really you guys really took a team that plays tough defensively, kind of took them apart. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's our calling card, our defense. But, you know, the one thing we didn't do, we didn't finish possessions. We should have did a better job rebounding. We gave up 22 offensive rebounds, and that's the last part of defense is getting the ball right. so we can go back and play offense. You know, uh, when you, you got a couple of guys that were in foul trouble, especially Ivy, and then Nigel Ribeiro comes in and really plays big. And some of the things that you don't see on the stat sheet, he did very well. Oh, all the time, man. You know, that's a tough, hard-nosed kid. You know, kid that been um, pretty much here for three years in the program. You know, I've, I've had the, you know, the, the privilege of coaching him for one, but, you know, he, he's experienced. And, you know, night in, night out, you know, the game, one thing I know about Nigel Rivero, the game will never be too big for him. Absolutely. Something else that I found interesting in this ball game. Jackson State, which is already not the best free throw shooting team, one guy went to the free throw line the entire night, which means they stood outside a lot shooting the three-point ball. They're the best three-point shooting team in the conference, but you live and you die by the three. You know, they took 34 of them, yeah. and we guarded uh, and held them to close to 33%. At the end of the day, man, you know, we, we pride ourselves on the defensive end. Yeah. We pride ourselves on taking care of keeping guys out the paint. We pride ourselves on trying to rebound. You know, we got to go back to the drawing board on the rebound aspect of it. And, you know, we got to do a better job of just, you know, being ready to just, just to get after it from the, from the start to the end. But, you know, with a few injuries out here with Deontay Jones and, you know, Anthony Gassick, some of those things are expected. But at the end of the day, we got to keep getting better. Coach, you got folks in Milwaukee and Beloit and Madison watching tonight. Yeah, well, you know, hey, man, I, I appreciate y'all back at home. Miss y'all, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, congratulations. 11 in a row, going for going for 12 in a row. 12 wins in the conference, which set a new record for Grammar. Well, you know, that's, that's that's our goal, man. You know, we've been talking about making history, and every day we come in, it's always some type mark, you know. So we're just going to keep trying to do what we can do, man. Play hard, leave leave it out on the court, and, you know, hopefully, you know, the basketball guys are with us and making shots. Well, we'll pray to the basketball guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right, final score again, 71-64. The Grammar State University Tigers beat Jackson State, sweep the season and series against Jackson State. And so Grambling continues to be number one in the Southwestern Athletic Conference on their quest to win a regular season crown. That'll do it for us. Our next broadcast will be coming up a week from tonight against Arkansas Pond Bluff. We will see you then. Thanks to the entire GSU TV crew and, of course, Alan Blakeney, the director. Always remember, one nation, one people. Peace.